Welcome uh, into our Excel file tool. So our um, MYC transport GHG emission tool. So once you've uh, opened the, the file, the Excel file, you will find the first tab, which is get started. On that page, you can select if you're a city or if you're a country, let's say we are a city. Afterwards, um, we have to give our name, uh, let's say um, Klimaland and the reference here we want to start with. So for example, uh, we want to make our inventory for the year 2018 and choose our language. Um, so we can choose between English, French and, and Spanish. Um, I try with English even though I'm French, but of course um, English is better for everyone. You have uh, one point to pay attention to. It's that the data you enter, you rather have to enter them manually because if you copy the cells, you may damage some automatic error detection. Um, so please be aware that it would be better to really enter all data manually. It also helps to uh, check what you're writing in the tool actually. I recommend to read the presentation of the tool. I know that some people don't do it. Um, really try to, to read it, it's not very long. So you have a bit of, of insight uh, how it works. And you have here the color codes of our tool. Um, you have data input, that means you have to enter data, they are in green. All the gray areas, um, you don't have to do anything into it and the default value neither, but it shows you eventually default values if some default values are available for you. One point that's important to know, the tool um, is locked. So you can't do anything except inputting the data. If you need to change any graph or colors or whatever in the tool, you have a password and you have to ask the password um, to ask MYC for the password. Maybe we also may have an overview of what's in the tool, at least the tabs. 1A is the input base in BAU. Um, 1B is the top-down validation, so the validation of what you've done here. The 2A and 2B are the scenario, so the climate scenario. And on the, point, uh, the, the tab three, you have the overview of results of the entire calculation here. The green ones are the one where you have to input data. The blue ones are the one where you see the results. And the gray ones that you follow here are only um, to, to show you, to have a clear information if you want um, to, I don't know, look at one special data, or if you want to uh, be a kind of expert of the tool and you want to really deep dive into it. These are only calculations tab. You don't have to do anything into that. Uh, no input, nothing. They are locked, so you can't do anything. But of course, you can have a look and maybe use the data if you want. Um, here's the BU calculation. Here is the it's the calculation of the climate scenario. Here it's the tab of the default value. I will go back to that just afterwards. You could use that as a normal user. Uh, it depends if default values are available or not. In the six, it's for expert users. There are values, default parameters for the emissions, emission factors in kilogram per terajoule. These are the defaults of the IPCC. So most of the time you will, do, will not have to do anything with that. Here you have sources, sources and abbreviations if you need. So there is a, an explanation of the vehicle categories, for example, also if you want to. And here it's the tab for referencing. It's for, you really don't have to do anything to that. It's just the three languages that are shown 
in it. Concerning the default values, so I'll make a quick explanation. Um, you see in all the tabs you have, I do it a bit later. Um, in all the tabs you have, you have this column here, these tables that are in orange. This could be the values of the country for cities. So if you are a city, you can ask the MYC secretariat if they have default, default values for your country. If they do have it, they will have it in this format and you just have to copy paste the data into these tables in the five, in the tab five. If you are a country, you don't have any defaults for you, of course, uh, but you produce defaults by using the tool. So if you're a country, by entering the data into the input area, they will be linked to this tab and you will have then an, an abstract, let's say, of the data that, uh, that you have. And in this case, you can then send this table to MYC in the same format, or you send the entire tool. And they will, if necessary, give it to cities. Of course, you can do it yourself. You can copy this tab and send it to, the, to your cities. If you know that they are also doing the same as you, uh, that means using the, the MYC JG tool. That's, that was the, the result trick on the default values. The next step will be the tab 1A. It's a tab for the base, so the, the inventory, and the BAU, the business as usual scenario. The inputs are bundled together, so uh, it's quite logical, you will see. You can read the introduction, and afterwards we can start. On each tab, you have the number of the tab, the where you where you are, actually who you are also. So we are in Cleveland, and for which reference you're you're giving the data. So we can we can start with the number one, the socioeconomic data. Please read the description and the, the remarks or the explanations. Um, it's a very straightforward point, you have to enter the number of inhabitants. So I will enter data with you uh, to show how the tool is working. These are all the me data, but realistic ones. So let's say you have a city that currently, at least in 2018, had 6,073,000 000 inhabitants. 2018-2020, in the period we expect a growth of 2.5% of the population according to the projections. We expect, let's say, 1.5 for the rest of the periods. I remind you, it's um, these are annual growth rates in the given period, for example. And we want to have the GDP for a city. It's maybe may a bit difficult to, to calculate for um, a country. It's quite straightforward. Um, it's good if you have the data. If you don't have it, it's not uh, a catastrophe. So in our case, we know that our city has a GDP of $44 billion. And we expect um, growth. So at the beginning, it was not so much of a growth, let's say, because of the corona. Um, consequences and we are going a bit better on 1% and we expect in the future to grow until 3% annual growth rate for the GDP. That's for the first point. Afterwards we go to the second point, the vehicle kilometers traveled. For this point, the vehicle kilometers traveled, you have to enter the VKT, what the sort of vehicle kilometer, 
in million kilometer per year. That's the first option. So let's say you have a transport model in your city and you have these results already given by the, by the uh, transport engineers. If you don't have that, um, you can make a proxy by using the fleet approach, which is not so good as the VKT approach, but you can give the vehicle stock, number of vehicles, and the average annual mileage of the vehicles. The point is that you will just have the mileage um, let's say of the inhabitants or the people that are registered in your city, but you will not have the kilometers of the um, uh, vehicles going through your city or or paneling. So you will have to pay very much attention that we are in a territorial approach and try as much as possible to correct this data, uh, the annual mileage per vehicle, so that you really have all the kilometers within the territory of your city or country. In our case, as we, um, we let's say we have a transport model um, and we know actually how much, how many kilometers are driven in our city, we can enter um, some data. So NMT, um, they are non-motorized transportation. So it includes um, pedestrians and bikes. Let's say we have uh, around 1,500 million kilometers per year. Um, private car, we have 3,842. And I go through the list and I ask myself, do I have them? If I have I enter the data, for example, we don't have motorcycle taxi, but we have minibus. We also have buses. This data, you can get it from your operator. Urban train, we have that too. Metro, we have that too. But we, for example, don't have any BRT or long distance train. And on the straight side, we have light commercial vehicle, as well as solo trucks and um, articulated truck. We don't have any freight. You can see that it's uh, this this uh, part went green. That means you can enter now your annual growth um, of mileage in the same way as above um, growth per year. Let's say we expect that there is a growth that's the same as the population growth for the NMT, um, but we expect, for example, no growth for the other vehicles, which is completely um unrealistic but it's just to um to shorten a bit the explanation so for each of your vehicle modes you have to say what is the expected growth of the mileage annually you can use the two approaches if you don't have the data in the right format you can use the vehicle stock proxy we don't recommend to do it because it's a bit of, of confusion. Um, so, but you, you can do it if, if you really want to do so. Uh, it works in the same way, you enter here your fleet. For example, uh, a motorcycle taxi, we have 10 of them and you have uh, 10,000 kilometer per year and then you will have to enter the annual growth. So here you can see the results. What's the mileage you have in the different reference years. After that, you can go to point three, which is load, occupancy, and average trip length. For the average occupancy and load, it's quite straightforward. Um, these are I remind you for the 
present time. So let's say we have 1.8 person per car, individual taxi one, we don't uh, count the driver, motorcycle one, there are in some countries and it's quite, um, there are more than one person on, on a motorcycle. Um, minibus five, let's say, buses on average 20. So you have to build averages for your entire fleet, of course, based on the data of your operator. Same thing for, for urban train or metro. And for trucks, you have to give the tons per vehicle. Um, that's sometimes a bit tricky to find. You may have to do some calculations to try to find an average. These are most of the time kind of proxies. It's quite difficult to be very, very precise on this data, except if, you, if you're very advanced in your data gathering. And finally, you have to give the BAU trip length. Um, that, that means this trip length will be used afterwards. We don't change it. Um, it will be used for the calculation of the scenario. So it doesn't play any role for the inventory, but it plays a role for the scenario to calculate the shift option. Um, so it's really good that you enter that for your city, especially because it's um, very different from one city to another. So in our case, we have, for example, 15 kilometers per trip on average for cars, six for taxis, motorcycle. Of course, you just have to enter the average trip length for the transport modes you have or you will have. So if you build a BRT, for example, you should enter also the average trip here. We are not expecting any BRT in our scenario. And then we have the 3.2, that's vehicle kilometers traveled, break down by fuel type. That seems a lot, it's not so much, um, so complicated actually. You have the vehicle kilometers traveled and you have to give for each year and for each category, here private car for example, which share of the mileage can be attributed to gasoline vehicle, diesel, LPG, natural gas, hybrids, electric. For our example, we say we don't have any electric car or any alternative fuel. We just have gasoline and diesel, for example. You see, you have a warning. It doesn't make 100%. So please always try, uh, not try, but do it. Uh, you have to, to go until 100%. And you have to do that for each year. In our case, I give, for example, some change. I say there are in the BAU scenario, once again, we are not in the climate, um, that we expect anyway a penetration of the electric cars because we already have policies on that that are um, implemented to raise the number of electric cars. And we are very uh, good on that. So expect already quite a growth. Yeah, so you have 100% here. You have to do that for each of the vehicles and you really have to, because if you don't do it, uh, you there is no calculation. So you have to take the time to do that. It will help you also to C to let's say reflect on the data you have to ask you is it um, yeah, realistic what I what I'm writing um, you can give the source at the end of the document to be sure everybody can understand where it's coming from. And you see that for the different vehicles type, we are 
expecting or not to have electric vehicles. For motorcycle, we are expecting afterwards because we don't have policies for the moment, but we know it will be growing also in a very steep way because we know that um, the big producer of car of motorcycle in our country is planning to have new mo um, models for electric motorcycles, for example. So it's quite sure we will have it. Same for minibuses. Um, our operator is already planning to have these vehicles. They are already uh, into their business as usual plan. So we integrate them too. Um, but buses, they don't plan anything because it's too expensive, for example. So on the BAU, they will not, not do anything. Light commercial vehicle, it's a bit tricky, of course, because it's the, it's not really in the decision of the city. So on our, in our scenario, we say, actually, it stays the same. We don't expect any change. It's 50-50. And we maybe see in the climate scenario if we could do something for that. Solo trucks, the same. They all have diesel. We're not expecting. We're not expecting um, companies to do any investments without incentives. Exactly. For urban train, uh, you have to give it. Although it's quite, as you see, you can have so much option, options. Um, urban trains are also tramway, of course. And the metro is also 100% electric. Exactly. Long distance rate and freight, long distance train sorry, and freight. Um, you can have both diesel or electric. Then if you have it, you have uh, you can enter the percentage of uh, mileage for them. We are going now to um, the 3.3, average energy of fuel consumption for the different vehicle type. So in this case, you also have to enter the data because if we don't have any consumption, there will be no emission, of course. So for all the different vehicles, but also fuel that you gave, for example, here we have gasoline, diesel, electric, we have to enter data for for this, you are in liter per kilo, 100 kilometer as unit. For gas, you have in kilogram and electric kilowatt hour. For each of them, of course, you have to enter the BEU projection. How you expect the, what's the efficiency? So you expect, for example, um, let's see. 0.5, there's a reduction per year of 0.5% of the fuel consumption for your vehicle because um, they, they are improving most of the time, thanks to the renewal of the fleet and new cars are consuming less, except if you buy only SUVs, in this case, it will not improve. So you have to calculate that based on your fleet. And you, let's say we don't expect any improvement in the electric cars. So of course, minus means um, improvement. If you put it without, that will means you consume more than before. So as you see, we are going to 6 to 5.9, 5.8 and so on and so on. Let's enter then fuel consumption for all our vehicles and fuels. So as usual, 
it's quite often this that um, for example private car does not consume the same as taxis sometimes it's the contrary taxis are consuming less because they have better cars uh, you just have to to do some survey or or try to um, get the data from the from some experts or studies uh, you really have to to use all sources you may have to find it as much as possible as average for your for your fleet here we just have we don't have PRT, very light commercial vehicle neither we have lcvs of course they are consuming a bit, a bit more because they are bigger vehicles trucks are of course consuming much more articulated two and for urban train it's uh, metro it's in kilowatt hour you have to ask your operator if you don't have the data already and we are on the last point of this tab it's the 3.4 evolution of the co2 content from the electricity production in all scenarios so it will be used for the bu and the climate scenario let's say in our city we have 500 gram co2 per kilowatt hour quite often um, these data are at the national level but you also may have local producer electricity production and then you can ask them what they are planning to do and see what what it brings to the mix electricity mix so we plan a reduction of the CO2 content uh, from 2025 on, for example, in our case. And you have road and rail. So that means these are different, of course. Can be that your um, train operator is also produ producing or using special C uh, electricity just for their train. You are at the end of the first tab, congrats. From then on, you have some results that you can see on the right side. So you have the population. You see we start with almost 700,000, the GDP. You have here UVKT detailed uh, by vehicle type. Your model split for passengers. So you can see this, that uh, the buses are quite, quite uh, used in our uh, city, but in PKM, be aware, we are not in kilometer. So they are, that means there are a lot of people in our buses and they are running already quite good. The freight, so we can see that um, the actually we have quite a lot of articulated track. Maybe we have a highway or some, some big highways that are going through our city. And you have finally the emissions. So 20, 2018, the emissions are going down because of already in the BAU, because of, for example, our uh, electromobility policies and because of uh, a bit of an improvement of our fuel consumption. So it's already a good path that we have, but we want to improve that. In order to check your inventory, you can use the tab 1B. 1B is showing you the emissions. So as usual, please read the introduction. It gives you some in insight on the, the, the tab itself, why it's there. You have the emissions for transport globally, so some of road and rail. Of course, we have no emissions in rail because we are in uh, electric mode, so we have we don't have any 
diesel or gasoline vehicle, but we have then um, the consumption of gasoline and diesel in ton oil equivalent calculated by the tool based on our input. In order to check, um, because of course, maybe the first time that you do such a bottom-up calculation, that means you get from the real activity the, the emissions, you can check by using your energy balance that gives you the fuel that is sold on the market. So it's easier on a national scale because you have the energy balance most of the time. On the city scale, it's a bit more complicated. You may have the sales uh, through the refueling stations. They may give you their data and you get it, add it and give it into this table to see if it's matching. In our case, we gather the data and we have this result. So in ton, ton oil equivalent, please be aware. Give the source as usual. And you can see um, what's the, the result. So I don't want any electric actually. Um, Gasoline and diesel, 200, almost 400. We have a bit of a difference, around 4% and 12% gap. You can see it here. It's very reasonable. So if you if you just have, let's say, yeah, around 10%, even a bit more, you can be really like uh, confident. We have done a good job in your bottom up calculation. If you see any big, big, big gap, like 20%, 30%, 50%, 50 there will be probably a um, review that is needed in the tab 1A and to see where does it come from? Does it come from the kilometers? Does it come from the fuel consumption? Is there anything that's really weird? You have to really deep dive into the data to see why it where it is coming from. In some countries, there is a very, very big black market, which may be an explanation for a gap. But before studying this question, I would rather go into the data and check the data. You really see no other option um, and that everything is very, very correct. It can be that you have a big black market um, and then you may uh, discuss, discuss with, with colleagues to try to find out if this is a reasonable explanation. And you're done. You're done with your inventory. You have the, the emissions. You have the fuel consumption of your, of your city or your country. You know that you will already be reducing your emissions, but you want to know if you could do better with a climate scenario. 